Hi everyone. Welcome to module four. In module four, <clears throat> we're going to be uh, evaluating the rise of an industrial society from 1861 to 1914. You'll know this is when machines and the presence of manufacturing really tarted, started to take a stronghold. This is when economies started to really have a lot of power in these particular days, or time period, I should say. For this week, we're going to be reading chapters 13 through 17. You have quiz number three, which is over chapters 13 through 17. It'll be various true-false and multiple-choice questions. You'll get one attempt to take the quiz, so make sure that when you start the quiz, you're ready to take it. And the quiz will end on Sunday night as well. I'm sorry, Saturday night. Now let's go over some information from these chapters. In chapter 13, this is when we started to look at some key economic concepts that we see today, which is the role of inflation. Inflation started to show its head when the value of money started to grow very fast. And people didn't realize that the value of money growing so fast created a much lower purchasing power. The other thing that was started during this period was the role of taxes. Taxes were a great way to fund many of the expenses of the uh, different types of activities and wars that were evaluated. In chapter 14, you're going to be looking at the role of railroads and how it created economic expansion. Railroads are very important part of our economy and they've created a lot of growth in our economy and you'll notice that railroads are ways to connect a lot of areas very quickly compared to what it used to be it used to be it would take days and days for goods to travel between different parts of the country but the railroads really started to connect things much faster and productivity and economic growth was one of the big priorities during that time we also started to have the role of different market structures. We were looking at roles of monopolies and oligopolies. And you'll notice that these types of firms started to exist much more. And they created a lot of challenges for an economy. Because when you had a monopoly, they started to realize really quickly how to control the level of prices. And how to charge more when other people didn't have any resources available for that production. In chapter 15, we started to look at the role of public goods and how the government started, started to supply public goods for our economy. And you'll notice that the government was very important in terms of supplying these public goods that were critical to a society. Now we started to look at new farming techniques and approaches to feeding livestock increased efficiency, efficiency dramatically. And it made these large-scale government uh, operations much more efficient. They were able to do a lot more in an economy. So that's something we're going to really focus on in that particular chapter. The role of public goods and the role of the government and how the role of the government really created a lot of challenges for our economy. In chapter 16 we're going to look at population growth and the role of immigration. Now we start to have a lot more people come from other countries. And when we focused on the role of immigration, you'll notice that all of these countries that were focused on and all of these people that started to come over to our country started to create more opportunities for growth and resource allocation. Then we started to look at different labor and capital techniques in an economy and those challenges that we were facing in economies that had maybe more labor or maybe more capital. And in the last chapter, we started to look at industrialization and then the role of an entrepreneur and how an entrepreneur was very important to the role of our economy. Entrepreneurs were starting ideas that were critical to the success of many of the new ideas that started. And you notice that right now in our economy today that the role of entrepreneurs are prevalent all over the place. And they are the reasons why we have so many small businesses starting and so many growth opportunities. 
So those are some of the review from chapters 13 through 17. I think you'll like these chapters. It'll bring about a lot of different challenges. And you'll start to see connections with our everyday life as well. And how these uh, different theories, different concepts are started to root in what's going on in our daily life. I look forward to your effort this week and let me know if you have any questions.